Hi everyone, this is Kelsey with Beyond Labs. Today I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on how to do an NMR on your product material in the organic lab. So for today's tutorial, I am using Activity 2-13 Hydroboration 1. So I have already done the reaction and worked up my product. So down here in this flask on the bench, I have 2-methyl-1-butanol, which is the desired product for this reaction. Now, if you want to take an NMR, you see we have this NMR instrument here back behind the bench. There's this little screen that right now says Proton NMR on it. If you hover your mouse, you'll see that it tells you you can switch to C13 just by clicking. And if you click again, it'll switch it back to Proton. So for this example, we're gonna do a Proton NMR. So you click on the instrument, and it will bring up an NMR tube and you just drag it over to your flask. Once you set it on the flask, you should get a spectrum that comes out. Now, a couple of things. The peaks will already be labeled for you in small red numbers. There's also a table at the bottom that has the peaks with their numbers and their corresponding peak heights or integrations these values that are placed in these boxes are arbitrary. They're just for comparing to each other so that you can determine how many protons each peak corresponds to. You can also click and drag on the spectrum to zoom in. So in this case, I'm going to zoom in below 5 ppm because there's nothing above that of interest. And it will give you a clear view of the peak so that you can see splittings and so forth. Now, I have a picture here of what you might want to draw um, when you get your product and you're trying to decipher um, this proton NMR. So this is 2-methyl-1-butanol. I just have explicitly put out all the hydrogen so that you can see them clearly. In this video, I'm not going to cover everything, obviously, about deciphering a proton NMR. There's tons to it um, that you will have learned or will be learning in your organic chemistry classes. I'm just going to be covering a couple of specific things and how our software spectrum can be used um, to fill out your worksheets or to determine, um, decipher really your product that you have and where the, where the peaks correspond to in the spectrum. So <clears throat> I know here, first I would count how many hydrogens um, this molecule has, so I can be ready for that. So we have two methyl groups with six, so six total. And then we have five coming from carbons and one on this hydroxyl. So together we have 12, 12 hydrogens that we're looking for. Now I know that this hydroxyl proton is going to be deshielded and that it's going to be a singlet. And so that I can assign to peak number one here. That's a singlet. Um, it's the most deshielded peak of all the peaks. So I would go ahead and assign that proton to peak number one. Now, this is where these heights come in handy. So you can see here, peak number one has a height of about 100. We know now from our initial assignment that um, the hydroxyl proton is, is, this is a single proton um, for this height. And so a height of about 100 or an integration of about 100 corresponds to one proton. Um, and this is a good example because 100 is a pretty nice round number. You can look quickly at the other peaks and just do a quick comparison. So peak two is about 200, about two times 100. So that peak likely corresponds to two protons. Peaks three, four, and five are also near 100 in their heights. And so those you could each count, you could each quantify as being one proton. And you can see that peaks six and seven are both around 300 and likely correspond to about three, proton, to three protons each. And if you sum those together, if one, two, three, four, five, six, plus three is nine, plus three is 12. So that's all of our protons accounted for right there. Now, based on other things you will have learned about splitting, as I mentioned, and um, the shielding and deshielding that occurs, you could go through here and make the assignments of these other peaks, and you should get something that looks like this. So I've just gone ahead, made an assignment with these peaks um, based on 
this Proton NMR using the zoom ability, using the heights provided in the spectrum to compare to each other. Um, and this you could go ahead and use to fill out the worksheet, putting in the chemical shifts, um, the splitting of each one of the peaks. And then also if you were asked by your professor or teacher to make an assignment of specifically which protons correspond to which peaks. So hopefully that helps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and go to beyondlabs.com for the latest virtual labs.